There we go. Good afternoon and welcome to this eGym webinar live question and answer session with Mike for implementation manager for eGym UK and myself Guy Griffiths from GG Fit. So the idea of this is we're, we're having a, a 30 minute chat. Um, we're going to take some questions from the audience. So please do ask a question live on the webinar um, software if you can. Um, we've got a series of questions here already, and we've got some questions from the eGym events that we ran um, around the country a couple of weeks ago. Before we get into that, let's uh, start with some get to know Mike and Guy questions. Some simple ones, just yep. to get the ball rolling. When did you last do a workout, Mike? Uh, I had a training basketball game on Monday night, followed by a gym session Tuesday morning. So just trying to keep active in the start of basketball season. Very good. What about you? Um, workout properly was probably a run on tuesday for those of you watching after the event it's thursday at the moment just uh, to, to let you know um for me it's about being active as well as doing workouts yeah. um so I've, I've i played 18 hours of golf as well yesterday and then i've cycled to the station to get here today so oh by the way we're here at eGym's offices in london and that's where we're broadcasting from um and your next workout what's that going to be uh so next one will hopefully be tomorrow morning uh again hopefully doing some sports specific training just to again mm -hmm as you'll get the hint of very basketball related at the minute <laughs> yeah for me it'll be i might squeeze a run in tomorrow but if not it will be running around the rugby pitch um uh, after or with my son and the other under sevens uh, the under seven minis from from rams on the sure they're morning. nice to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um what else have we got as a starter questions before we, we are going to get into some detail on on retention and eating but um what's your favorite food mike Oh, anything Mexican, really. I okay. do, do love a bit of Mexican food, uh, something about the spice. Burritos are my go-to. So if anybody cool. ever wants me to do anything for them, a burrito will go down well. Okay. Cool. <laughs> what about you? Uh, it would be, uh, I was going to say pizza, but actually, yeah, I do pretty much anything for pizza or sushi, um, within reason. If there's a conference to uh, that I'm asked to speak at and there's there's uh, pizza or sushi involved, then Happy that's, days, yeah, really, that's pretty, yeah. much, pretty much nailed on. Uh, we did talk earlier about favourite uh, football teams, just because that's what everyone wants to know. But well, not, neither of us are bothered. Are I'm from really? the states, so I didn't grow up with, as I would call it, soccer. So, mm -hmm. um, and as you begin, say basketball related. Yeah, that's where it comes from. So, so favourite team would be. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Minnesota, so Minnesota Timberwolves is my uh, go-to NBA team. Okay, cool. Um, not that they're doing too well at the minute. I tend to follow my favourite athlete more than anything. Okay, so so uh, LeBron James. I've okay. um, been following him since high school. Mm -hmm. I think his influence, not only within the NBA, but around the world with him setting up uh, his own school for underprivileged kids and just trying to actually better the community nice. is really inspiring to yeah. all levels of anybody around the world, not just sports people. Cool. So, okay, yeah. Um, obviously going to say rugby fan as we uh, said because you got well, the boy into it a little bit so. yeah i mean so going back to my roots i'm from northampton which kind of by default makes me a rugby fan rather than a football fan um yeah without going into too much detail but yes rugby it's about that attitude and the, 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 the all the treads i'm not gonna be able to remember all the but teamwork and respect yeah um and those kind of things um so yeah i love rugby so uh, yeah. disappointed this morning about england not playing france at the weekend but um i will be at the local Rams game and i follow northampton um, as a rugby team inspiration athlete off the bat probably uh garen thomas i'd say yeah. quite cycling as well i'm more watching it than doing it except for cycling to the station on my, <laughs> on my rusty mountain mode um but good i think that's that's hopefully um an interesting uh little intro for, for you out there just yeah. so it's a little know, bit so more of insight yeah. about us so find out about us next time you see us on site or at a conference you can uh yeah. start a conversation with us for using one of those little topics yeah exactly <laughs> um so into the questions that we've got from uh, some from the audience, I'm going to keep an eye. If I keep looking down, it's because I'm looking at the laptop rather than the webcam. Um, but the, the the first question we've got is, do you see technology as an enabler to getting inactive people in the gym? Um, and why? Probably one for us both there. Yeah. What's, your, what's your take on that, Mike? I definitely think it's a big thing in getting inactive people active. Um, with the take up of over the last few years, I mean, uh, even when I was working as a personal trainer in a gym, watching people who started to come in and seeing them, like just even coming into the gym for the first time uh, and setting up their Fitbit mm -hmm. there and then. Mm -hmm. um, my zone's coming into the facility. Uh, so all those little bits happening there. 
uh, actually from personal experience as well, um, for my wife, who was a non-gym goer, mm -hmm. even though she's known me for all, that's part of the decade now, um, and I've always been active, it took up until earlier this year to really rub off on her. Okay. And that was from just starting to track her workouts on a fitness app. Sure. So, and yeah. that was what the biggest key because now she has a goal to go in and Damn. actually sit down and just, and even though I tried to write her programs and that beforehand, it weren't until she could take it in on something that she has with her all the time that yeah. made the biggest difference. And it might be a, an aspect, I guess, of you're, you're, you're helping her, but you're not yeah. controlling is not the right word, but nope. you're giving her the resource and she's got that on the app and she yep, can go she's... off and take it in and yeah she's she's got her apple watch which she then uses to make sure that she's tracking a workout there okay. as well and the exercise are written down on another app mm -hmm. um i'm just going to put the little kick out there earlier is the e-gym member app that we are using so yeah. um so i'm writing the programs for her using our trainer app there mm -hmm. and it's just i it's helped her so that's just on a personal level cool. um obviously i hear about it all the time whenever i'm in a gym doing an implementation people mm -hmm. saying about what they've helped and when i'm at sites talk to people i think it's been the biggest key and to watch the figures of the amount of people across the uk have increased in physical activity mm. since the introduction of smart watches and yeah. technology has been yeah. good to see so yeah for sure i mean for me it's it's assisting people it's getting and i'm particularly passionate about the inactive yeah there's a lot that the fitness industry does i believe in uh getting the active even more active, even more active. Yeah. Um, but that's only, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20% of the population at best. Yeah. Um, in terms of getting the inactive more active, it's assisting them, it's simplifying it for them. Um, and I think with things like eGym, there's going to be a bit of a focus on that. It's safeguarding as well, yeah. know, making sure it's safe for them. Um, and any kind of tech, I think the way it helps, the, 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 the why, if you like, is showing people the progress and giving them the, the motivation um, through giving them progress and and a certain amount of gamifying which you yeah. know, tech is, re is really good at so um yeah I, th I think that's where tech is helping to enable and one of the keys to it which we'll probably jump keep coming back to is that the tech is not just for the inactive it's for the instructors yeah. and the staff within the club it's a tool for them um to to help people either as a usp um a unique selling point to be able to sell the services and show how easy it is or it's a tool for them to help to motivate yeah, the inactive 100 percent i mean um especially like i say when i was a personal trainer working in the gym myself um my main target was people who were suffering from pain and injury because of mm -hmm. inactiveness so mm -hmm. office workers so if i would have been able to have something along the lines that i could have put my specialties into even an app based yeah. to help them get even more active would have been key line yeah. uh, and i mean i used to even just go down the line because i some of the exercise i used to prescribe to people would be right you just need to do these at these set times during the day mm -hmm. use google calendar put it in as a little 15 minute yeah. thing so it just pops up and which is tech and it's using right. yeah again yeah. using a different kind of tech yeah so it's the tool but i think the key point here is and there's lots of stories about the fitbit or uh, other there's, there's lots of wearables out there so i shouldn't just pick on fitbit but there's lots of people using those and then drifting off yeah it really is a tool for staff and for fitness professionals. Yeah, yeah I think that's the real enable the, the the tech on its own. Yeah, it helps a bit, but it's but, the combined. I will say it is a combined. Yeah, of everything. Yeah. Um, okay, good. Um, keep an eye on other questions coming in and on the time as well, because we're we are aiming for thirty minutes, so about the, almost a third of the way through. Um, what do you think is the most important part in the retention journey? It's the next question. Um, probably aimed a bit more at me there but uh i'll excuse mike because i'm reading reading my handwriting here <laughs> is, uh, um I, I i i bang on about this all the time um in, in presentations and for me it is i'm going to call it the induction just for a moment yeah. but getting there's lots of key points in a member journey yeah um you know calling an absent member you know when members leave uh, getting feedback from them and, and talking to them at that point as well um having a program review, um, upgrading people to platinum or, or getting people to progress along the journey. But all those are a whole lot easier to do. Um, yeah. You might not even have to make the absent call if you get the first appointment right. And 
we call it the induction because people know people in the fitness industry know what we mean um but the getting started session or the yeah. welcome session or the that's the, the, for me it's a quite quite a, a simple answer i think that's the most important part of the retention journey what's your take on that i definitely think getting the first appointments right i mean um whether you call it an induction or you call it your the first 30 minute free session mm -hmm. like sometimes i know gyms that i've been in the past they try and sell it as a free 30 minute pt session because it sounds like it's that little bit more mm -hmm. like there's that more value behind it if it is like uh -huh. that free pt session getting that right but also mm -hmm. not only from the point of making sure that you've done everything you need to to make sure that they're happy yeah but also making sure that the trainers themselves are talking to the individuals on a human level not mm. a, i'm a personal trainer i'm better than you yeah understanding them is going to be the biggest key and that's so it's it's just customer service when it comes down to it and the biggest thing yeah. i think within that first yeah. bit but then going forward as well the mm. biggest time i mean just getting that customer service getting anything you can do to help every single step of the customer journey is yeah. going to be the biggest step. but that first point i mean they say it's even the first impression is worth a, the biggest amount you yeah. get that first impression right yeah people aren't going to walk away with a sour yeah. taste so 100 percent. i i have to disagree with a little bit just for a sense of balance and also because people have seen me over the last couple of weeks say don't call it free yeah so i i would yeah first i think selling or pitching it as your yeah. first 30 minute pt session i would say it's worth you know what's pt 100 pound an hour uh depending on the area so where we are definitely 100 pound an hour so let's right call now it, let's call it your first session which is worth 50 pounds yeah um no you can't not pay a joining fee and get 50 pounds off but yeah. I, I would put a value on it and say we are paying this pt to deliver this yeah. 30 minute session to you the value of it is 50 pounds. we're not paying him well, yeah 50 pounds but the value is yeah um but uh but yeah and I th I, really good point there on you know in those appointments it's about the listening yeah it's not about I'm qualified. Yeah. I know what you should be doing because it's about getting to know the person, about listening to them, and you'll, uh, as an instructor, you'll learn a lot yeah. about the member. And if you don't, you're probably not going to go very far with them. As an instructor, they should already be. If you're talking to somebody within that first appointment, they already look at you as the fitness professional anyway. So mm. you don't need to go out there to belittle them. You no. just need to be upfront with them, Frank, but also listen to their needs. Find out about them. 100%. And it's, that's the biggest thing their needs are what are going to help you mm -hmm. and go a long way to yeah. make them happy and then keep coming back cool. so. very good um so while we're on uh new members and joining this was something that we covered um or there were some good questions that came out from the audience at the um seminars the workshops that we ran um and they were asking about um email subject lines so i'll, I'll just kind of cross these off because they've come in since as, as, as well as, as questions as follow-ups um, what's the best email subject line? Um, I'm interested to hear your thought on this because email okay. subject lines are going to be my downfall with this because I always struggle when writing an email. Oh, what should I put as a subject line? Okay. So actually, hearing your input on this would be. Um, I mean, and, and we were talking specifically about. Well, I, I know the question has come from someone specifically thinking about the welcome email yeah. rather than a absent email or a general newsletter. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the, the simple answer is ones that boost open rates. What yeah. we're trying to do with the subject line is get the email opened. Um, Which I'm going to guess welcome to the gym is not going to be the best one. Now, people aren't really going to go, oh, that's not going to make me. No, I, mean, I think I think that's it's, it's a it's nice, nice one. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you need a bit more than that, I think. Um, you know, the average open rate in the health and fitness industry is just under 20%. So one in five get opened. If your first email that you send to a new member is below 50%, then you do need to do something you should be getting half of your welcome emails open um now i can say you can if you google best email open rate line subject lines there's going to be you'll get you'll get 30 page. articles of 101 best open lines and all sorts of stuff so i'm not going to go into like real specifics but i would say um it needs to be meaningful so i mean welcome to the gym is good um but it also if you say what's inside the email then that's that's a good way of getting people to open it. So almost a, a list of um, you know things that are in there. You yeah. know, a reminder about how to book classes. Um, we'll, you know, putting what is in the email will help to open it, making it personal. So it's it might seem clever or technical to put 
the first name in the subject line it's not it's really easy to do so welcome to guys jim mike yeah that is that, your information package yeah for... already i've not opened it yet but it, it's it's already it's personal. a personal email yep. that you're getting so making it personal and then the last part which is probably the slightly harder part is to make it intriguing or funny or ask a question um so like i say there's there's hundreds of lists online of how to write good subject lines um but um yeah making it meaningful making it personal and making it either intriguing or funny or and um asking a question would, would be my kind of three go as tips. far as setting a task kind of thing like uh we talk like little joking we'd ask you to book onto a class or something like that totally yeah, something be really would be because then yeah. it's going to trigger them a little bit more i know that would trigger me yeah cool go, i mean i haven't called to action yeah. the subject line that's that's really good yeah um if you're open if you if you if you've done this and you've really worked on it hard and your open rates are still below 50 percent, and you need to boost them you could spend hours on subject lines the best way to boost open rate is to tell the new member that they're going to get an email uh just seeing up there uh question come in within the emails i'm guessing is oh, yeah. what's your view of using emojis um within I, the emails I, I think that's a great idea yeah um yeah that's that's a, a really good question from the audience um for me that that fits into the funny part funny and personal personal makes it that little bit more friendly maybe maybe intriguing yeah. um we run a challenge club um we put out monthly challenges to to some of our clients and, and other people who've signed up for the challenge club I use emojis a lot in there because there's a rugby ball. Yeah. Guess what? We're doing a rugby world cup challenge, but there's, there's always a trophy or a medal or something like that. We're doing a rowing one at the moment and just to find an emoji with a rower on, it's just, there's not an emoji that isn't really available nowadays, is there? So yeah, good, good, good question. Thank you. Um, so yeah, a little bit about subject lines. Um, there's lots of stuff on the internet, but yeah, meaningful, personal and intriguing or funny for people would be my top tips. Um, we talked about seven day calls as well. That was a really good question that came out of the webinars. Uh, so, sorry, of the um, of the workshops. Um, so the seven day call is something that is, should be part of the journey. If you're not calling members seven days after they join, then you're missing the trick, really. Um, it's just a nice thing to do, but that's not why you do it. Yeah. Um, the reason, so to, so to start with the why. So the question is, who should make the seven day call? I'll start with the why. You're finding out if people are making visits. You're finding out if they've had their induction, getting started, whatever. You're finding out if they've done a class. If all these are going well, you're asking for a referral. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, there's a reason. There's a why to do it. How you do it, and I will go into the who. <laughs> um, I mean, if it's just a daily task, it's Wednesday today. Who joined last Wednesday? Yeah. Bring them all. Okay. Um, or you can do it weekly. Just bulk it up on every yeah. Friday or whatever day you're going to do it. Who's joined? in the last seven days that from seven to 14 days whatever window you want to use who's best to do it and i we, we've we've gone over this with lots of clients who who's best? it's so is it a personal trainer is it the instructor is it the salesperson is it the gym manager the answer for me is whoever's most likely to do it because it quite often doesn't get done yeah it doesn't matter if this is the best place person if they're unlikely to make the calls they're no longer the best place. Yes, I know you're the instructor, you did their induction, you've spent a whole hour with them, so you're best to follow up. If you're not inclined to do it, then you're not the right person to do it. If the salesperson is inclined to do it because they're going to get a referral, and then so my kind of skirting around the actual question and answer is whoever is most likely to make the call. I definitely agree with you on that. The people who are most motivated to make the call, my own kind of little info mm. on that would be i would try and encourage the instructor who took the first appointment yep. to make it because if anything they should have a own their own personal agenda within that mm. making that call to get that person back in and convert them to the next level themselves For sure. so they should have that extra little motivation mm. and again i can speak from my own experience as a trainer i wanted to make those seven day follow-up calls because I wanted to make money and at the end of the day, trainers want to make That's, money. So, yeah. And if you can get the conversion rate from that, if you already haven't, maybe haven't had a conversion from the first appointment, mm -hmm. then yeah. you've got that second chance. And so, another, just another add on to that. If you tell the member that they're going to get a seven day call, they're prepared then to take it. They're prepared to take it and you better deliver it. Yeah. So that's another little insight there maybe. Um, 
Okay, a couple of a uh, couple of more e Jimmy type questions now. Um, so again, coming off the web, this one: How and why does e Jim improve retention? I'm sure, we both probably got a spin on that. What so, my spin on that, if you don't mind me jumping yeah, on yeah, first, because um, I get asked this question quite often every single time I do an implementation. Mm -hmm. Is okay. So, why is this going to make people come in more? And I always spin it back with a question to them. I go, okay, when you've got somebody who comes in and you give them a program, if you've given them a meaningful program, how often are they going to do it mm -hmm. without you there again? Yeah. And they normally say, okay, not that much. Sure. Well, if they can walk up to a machine, that is exactly the same almost as having an individual mm -hmm. with it all there in front of them. And it's got the motivation and they can see the two ticks and it's got today, tomorrow, or however yeah. many days they're more inclined to come they are instantly there's that extra little bit but also adding in the biggest thing is the gamification mm -hmm. people almost like whenever i do an implementation the first time i get an individual on the equipment and you just see them start working out now i always ask the question right at the end when they've done their first exercise were you focusing on me talking to you or were you focusing on collecting those little balls? Yeah. And it's always the answer. I've been told to shut up yeah. while, talk, while they've been working out because they're focusing on those balls. They're instantly enjoying the workout so much that they mm. want to keep doing it. Yeah. Then to progress that on, that's where we then have the goal-specific training that comes sure. in. So it's not just about getting the equipment in. It's then focusing on that goal-specific training and giving them something. Because mm. at the end of the day, everybody walks into the gym for their own personal reason. Yeah. So you have to offer that personal reason. We need them to get used to the training methods, which is the reason why there's always that start, but mm -hmm. then having that. Yeah. And then that should then go on to just having, again, the customer service from the people on site to then bring those people from eGym into the main gym yeah. so that there's always that constant progression. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's where I think the, the retention comes from is because actually they were scared to begin with or they weren't yeah. enjoying it. Yeah. Then they were enjoying it. Then they've had something which helped them get to their goal. And now actually, you know what? I'm more intrigued about exercise. I want to go into something else. Yeah. And that's yeah. where that length of stay is going to... Yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, for, it's uh, probably a, with the research I've done, um, it's probably a, a slightly different take on it. I agree with all of that. Um, I'm going to go back to what we were talking earlier about staff um, and systems like eGym. Yeah. Give your staff a, a purpose and it gives them the tools. And as long as they buy into it, which is really important, and that's... Keep, keep part of your keep job part, I know yeah. um, if they buy into it and they've got those tools and they use their tool that use those tools well that's that's what well, really nails down retention for me showing the members progress as well is really important going you know going through the different statuses um, and rewarding the process sorry reward rewarding progress yeah um, I'm not talking about t-shirts I'm talking about you know biometric age coming down or going from silver to gold or yeah. you know understanding that they are progressing. maintaining that level something like that is exactly. even great yeah. but also i love the fact that those tools mm -hmm. are instantly there as well for the staff to help further that member's yeah. journey so that it's not where i get asked a question all the time oh but how is this this is actually gonna uh, take no it's not taking you up the picture it's bringing you in more it's bringing you in Absolutely. deeper yeah with all of the analysis with all of the information People are going to come and talk to you about that. You've got mm. the train wrap to then look at it. If anything, you should then be going, right, I'm going to look at who's in the gym right now. I can see who's on the equipment. So I'm instantly going to have totally. an informed conversation. I've got their overview. I've got everything that I can. And actually talk to them about it because not only do I enjoy it, they're enjoying it. We've got that common ground to have a good conversation. Yeah, So totally. I think that also asks the, um, oh, sorry, answers the, I've got strength machines in my gym. So won't my machines improve retention as well i'd like to answer that a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. so on, a general strength more. machine mm -hmm. you walk in say it's and i'm not going to pick on any particular machines i'm just going to say so it's just yeah. an average pin select machine mm -hmm. yes it's a chest press same as where we have an e-gym chest press but for a member coming in and using that where's the information on how to see yeah okay there's always that description mm -hmm. Is a member going to walk in every single time and read that whole description? No. Are they going to remember what weight they used? Or are you going to get into that habit of 10 kilos, 12 reps, so where's next the, one? So where's the progression? Where's the progression? Yeah. Where is also for you guys or anybody who's watching this who could be an operator, 
where's the information for you guys to say what your members are doing mm. you could have a piece of equipment sitting in the middle of the gym that nobody uses yeah but the sales rep who sold you those pin selected machines yeah yeah no you definitely need this piece this of equipment what, yeah. but it's never been used and it's not there's no mm. value to it especially when the people who are going to use those machines more effectively they're the people who are probably spending more time at first in the free weights area they're already gym goers they've yeah. already got those habits then they're going to go on to the next bit which is or they're doing their actual bodybuilding workouts mm -hmm. and everything going back and forth yeah the knowledge basis behind and how to do it and what for a normal pin selected machine there's just not enough information that can be drawn from it in my views yeah, yeah. um so it's the data the, the, it's, the, it's data. the data it's the yeah. data i mean especially but both for the member and also for yeah. the club right it's for that yeah. and i mean especially my big biggest bugbear is when you see trainers standing in front of a chest press just counting off reps for an individual <laughs> well, well done mate. well done you can You're, yeah, yeah you can <laughs> count you should be showing them something which is away from machine so that's where instantly having that's going to help the retention again more because the data mm. that's coming off for the members for the club everything that's coming off of the EG machines is yeah. going to be a lot more beneficial to look at what's happening at the end of the day again yeah we can argue all day long a chest press is a chest press a mm. lap pull down is a lap pull down yeah. the movements have not changed since day one of somebody walking to a gym yeah but what we can provide from those movements mm. is what is key yeah seeing people go around the kit as well in in, in clubs um for me and i i think i think i write an article on this rather than going into it in a lot of depth now but there's something about flow and by flow i mean uh getting into a flow state and, yeah. and, and almost almost zoning out yeah watching eastenders or the football or whatever it is on a screen on a treadmill does not retain people no matter what people say but getting i've seen couples and, and like individuals just go around a circuit and they are just they're zoned out they're almost yeah. in a state of meditation which is i think is brilliant because they're going around that and they're just in that little zone for 15 minutes half an hour yeah. whatever it is and, and they're getting that as well as yeah, um, exercise which is i mean that's that's what part of what running is for me but, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, a couple of quick ones. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a quick one to, to finish off with um, because we're almost at time. Um, yeah, how many months more would my members stay if I had each at my club? Um, I, I could just quickly say two months. There you go. Put some EGM kit in, they'll stay two months more. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's not strictly true, but that's what we've seen from our analysis that we've done across lots of different types of club. Um, of course it's about the staff it's about the setting um that two months is based on an average length of stay of 10 months across yeah. all the clubs we analyzed we got an extra two we saw an extra two months with um with e-gym premium or classic so you could say it's a 20 percent uplift in length of stay because not everyone's average length of stay or membership is 10 months um but it varies massively on the setting what else your club does um you know, there's so many factors going into retention but a 20 percent uplift is what what we've seen yeah on, on and that line. that even if you did i mean obviously it depends on the individual who's coming in and how long they're going to stay everything like that Absolutely. and if they do like it but it's that even that two months even if it was only two months if it literally if we could if we mm. literally said actually across every single person who ever uses egin it's only two months on golf but you're not talking about one person you're talking no. about everything and Thousands. that means yeah. loads to yeah. You get that's where actually facilities need to ask themselves okay what would two months across a thousand members extra mean to me yeah. that's not just two months then. yeah that's... and i don't remember the exact numbers but that was based on i mean it was across five clubs we've built more in since then um and, and it's typically around that um but it's two three thousand members or, or more on egypt yeah compared with like 30 40 one well, no, i think it's probably even fifty thousand members who who weren't on egypt just using kind of standard control. yeah um so yeah, I think I'm just looking for any others online, but we don't have any at the moment. Maybe there'll be some more um, as a follow-up. If there are, you can email, um, probably best to email Tanya, tanya.hall at egym.co.uk. Yeah. Um, in terms of other things, I've got, uh, can I, are there's a, there is a follow egym webinars button down um, on the bottom of your screen, so hopefully you can do that. There's going to be the, um, the highlight webinar from all of the roadshows will be published next Thursday um so follow that egypt webinars button to to see that um highlight webinar from all the different sessions we ran 
Um, and then the following Thursday, we've actually shifted it back a week. So that's Thursday the 24th, I think. Um, I'm going to repeat my my whole session. It's about 30 minutes on yep. onboarding. So there'll be bits we've covered in here um, on that. Um, we'll hang on here if there's any other quick questions. But um, thank you very much for listening. I hope you found it useful. Yeah, thank, thank you for your Martin. time, everyone. No, yeah. yeah, always good to have a informed chat with somebody yeah. on subjects I enjoy. So <laughs> exactly. Um, so I hope you found it useful. Please give us some feedback. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at another one of these webinars very soon. Thank you very much.